Hi friends! Today is going to be reading old prose, pretty much. So when I was planning out Advent for this year, I had a few days left that I needed to fill. So I asked for some viewer questions from my friends and from those of you who, you know, are on the community tab and also in the Troublemakers Discord, I asked for questions. I got a response from Wrath, aka Jessica Hurt, who I will link in the description box down below. Um, she was one of our hosts for the most recent Worldwide Readathon, which doesn't exist anymore, but is Storyteller's Hearth now. So there's that. Um, her question was, and as I look over here, it's because I'm reading her question. She said, I don't know if you'd actually want to do this, but I always like seeing the different stages of a project but it's rare for people to share their first drafts. It'd be cool to see a page of a first draft and a final or just a later draft comparison discussion of that process, um, but totally get it if you don't want to show any of your first drafts. Even if you don't show any of it, I think a discussion of your first draft versus a final draft in general terms would be interesting as well. So what I decided to do was to look to see if I could find original drafts of my adult high fantasy. Um, the reason why I figured this would be a good comparison is because I did my first draft of this book in whew, 2006 or 2007 like it's been a long time uh, I was 20 so 2007 um, I wrote my first draft in 2007 I have my original first draft um, I have a draft that I did probably like five ish years later and then I have the draft that I did most recently, I think in like 2017 or 2018. Um, so I have like the original draft, a five years later draft, and like a five-ish years later draft. I am reworking the entire story. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the first draft. I'm going, not the whole thing, that would be, we'd be here forever because it's an entire like 97,000 word manuscript. Um, I'm going to read part of the first chapter which is awful, BTW, uh, be prepared. And <laughs> then um, like the draft, I think around like draft four, maybe draft four, draft five, I don't know, I haven't decided. And then I've completely changed how the beginning of the story is going to happen one day when I get back to it. Um, I've completely changed how the story is going to go. So I will, um, I've written out like a basic plot outline of what I want to happen in that first chapter or the first scene um and so I'll read that to you as well which it will change again and that's why I'm okay with sharing it because it's going to be very different in the future than what it is now so I feel like that was a good one to share because it's going to be so different and so much is going to change between now and then um I will be reading these so I will be looking at the screen instead of looking at you because I can't read from here like I just I can't I just love that I have draft one, draft two, draft three, draft four, draft five. I don't know which draft. I'm not going to like subject you to the torture of so much of this. I think it's like two and a half pages maybe. All right kids let's do this. Draft one from 15 years ago. Usually morning was my favorite time of day. The Christmas in the air, the sounds of wild animals, and feeling rejuvenated after a good night's rest. Yes, it truly was something that I enjoyed quite often in my 23 years. This morning, however, was something entirely different. Yesterday had been full of traveling, a journey that would have normally taken only a day had taken two. Halfway through the day, we had taken a wrong turn and were headed in the opposite direction of where we should have been going. As night fell, my traveling companions and I had stopped at the closest tribe for to rest for the evening. After a day of walking and a night of uncomfortable sleep on a makeshift bed, you can understand my vexation at the morning but it's expected when you stay in traveler's huts. The huts were small and cramped. Most villages kept them for the sole purpose of having a place for other light elves to stay during their journeys. My journey had started out at my home, the High Elf Tribe of Denton. I was on my way to see the Prince of Wood Elves in the Ryland Tribe. Though three others were accompanying me, I found it odd to travel with so many people. Normally, my best friend Keely and I would travel alone, but when the Prince of Wood Elves requests your presence at his home, one would find that more chaperones are involved. As I had thought her name, I could hear Keely's voice coming from outside of the hut. Keely and I had been best friends for as long as I could remember. Parents lived next to one another in our tribe, but where, 
when we were growing up, my father, Grady, the captain of our tribe's army, had trained us both heavily in combat. The circular swirled band I had marked around my right arm was proof of that. It was rare for a woman to be marked by this sign, but Keely and I were an exceptional occurrence. My father had died in battle when I was 12, around the same time that I had shown magical skill. Because my mother, Kaya, did not have any magical skills, she had turned me over to Keely's mother, Bree, for my training. It was Bree's way of thanking my mother for letting Keely have her combat training with my father and me. The flap covering the opening of the door moved, and I shifted my eyes in its direction as I sat up. Keely walked through the door, her body backlit by the sun. That is a, not what that says, but you don't want to know what it actually says, because it is very poor grammar. Uh, backlit by the sun that must have been fully raised okay the light made her long red hair look like it was on fire floating around her body I could tell from the look in her pretty hazel eyes that she was just as tired as I felt though I must admit that I was glad to know that I was not the only one completely worn out uh, and this is where we get into the part where we have to describe everyone's facial features and hair colors and eyes down to a T there was a slight contradiction in the looks of my best friend. Her face is round and her nose was cute and perfectly proportionate with her small facial features. Her body, much like my own, was strong and muscular from all of her combat training. My face was much more similar to my body structure. My facial features were strong, high cheekbones and all, not to mention the pointed ears. They were rare among us elves of present day due to all of the mixed blood over the centuries from humans and other magical creatures. Very few of us had pointed ears, though. I somehow managed to be one of them. Glad to see you're fully awake. Keely smiled as she walked into the hut, the flap closing behind her. I tried to wake you earlier, but you wouldn't budge, which is very unlike you. I think I was having a dream. I don't recall what it was about, though. I answered as I tried to bring back the thoughts that had been swimming in my head before I had awoken. Something about a cave, I think. Keely quirked her eyebrow at me before responding. That's not like you. You usually don't dream at all. Tell me about it, was my reply. I stood from the makeshift bed and stretched my arms above my head did not realize that rhymed. Uh, before letting my arms rest naturally back at my sides, I ran a hand through my shoulder length purple hair, making sure it was all back into its usual place. Well, Falcon and Lugus are ready whenever you are. It should not be much longer to the Ryland tribe. Keely informed. Falcon was the captain of our tribe's army. He had had been since my father had died. Considering where we were headed, Keely and I thought it was only right to ask him to accompany us. He was close to my mother's age, though he did not look a day older than me. This is the best sentence ever. Lucas was Keely's beau of a couple of months. I was 20 when I wrote this. His shoulder length black hair and deep violet eyes made him one of the better looking men from our tribe. He was a new addition to our duo. Until he and Keely started spending time together, I thought he was rather rude, but somehow he had managed to prove me wrong. At our age, it was normal for one to just be getting into looking for a mate and quite vital that we were a right fit for each other. Oh my gosh, did this have like a soulmate thing back in the day? Once we found someone and it was a mutual attraction, we would spend time together getting to know each other. Most of us only had one mate our entire lives. And since we were capable of living for hundreds of years, it was important to make sure we were right for each other. Wow, that is not a thing that's true now. Uh, it was rare for us to mate a second time unless our mate died early on in our lives, but we were hard to kill. I followed Keely out of the hut and greeted both of the men of, in our party. After stretching again, working out the kinks in my muscles, I turned to Falcon. How much longer until we reached the Ryland tribe? I asked. It will be the next tribe we reach before midday. I gave a soft sigh at his words. I was just ready to be there now. I was an impatient person and I couldn't help but wonder what the prince had wanted with my presence. I mean, he wasn't even my prince. Sure, we light, el we light races of elves respected both the high and wood elf royalty, which doesn't exist anymore. But I was a high elf and he was the prince of wood elves. I would have thought that if someone from the royal families needed to see me, it would be my own prince. There's more. Ugh, how is there more? As long as we were not hurting anyone, they didn't care about what any of us were up to. That too perplexed me a little. There were so many possibilities, so many things he could have wanted from me. But why the prince? There was a king and a queen, and clearly their power would be over his. If I didn't stop thinking about it soon, I would probably drive myself insane with all of the thoughts running through my head. I shook my head to clear my thoughts. No, now was the time to continue with what we were doing and not bother with the why. The sooner I gave up trying to figure out what was going on and just finished getting there, the sooner I would have the answers to my questions. Wow, that is awful. Uh, and nothing like the current story, which is fantastic. Fantastic. Let's go to the first chapter. Is this draft five? This one's only two pages. So, oh no, it's a full three pages. Cool. 
cool, cool, cool. All right, here we go. This is draft five, so this is the newest fully written out draft. Okay. I never thought 21 words could be so terrifying. I read the letter one more time before shoving it into the leather bag over my shoulder. The darkness around me made it too difficult to continue reading the scrawled letters anyway. The path grew darker with each passing minute. Trees lined the sky above. Underbrush crept out to meet with my feet as I walked. I needed to pay more attention to my foot placement instead of staring at a letter I'd already memorized. Prince Brennan of the Dolanti requests the presence of Alexandra of Denton at his home. Please do not keep him waiting. Also, the main character's name has changed. Surprise! With the memorized letter in my bag, my surroundings became clearer. The trip to Ryland, the seat of the Dolanti royalty, was a familiar one, a journey I'd made many times before. Usually, my Uncle Falcon accompanied me, but today I was alone. My mother and uncle hadn't been home when the Dolanti warrior had knocked on the door. After reading the summons, I'd packed a bag and waited for my family to return, waited for them to fall asleep. Once I felt assured I wouldn't be caught, I snuck out of the window of my room. There was no way I could look at my mother and tell her that the prince wanted to see me, not after what happened to my father. Just above a whisper, I could hear voices behind me on the path. Maybe I wasn't as alone as I thought. My pace continued to be slow. Whoever they were, they were catching up to me quickly. I stepped off the path to allow them to catch up without being in their line of sight. The path connected Denton, my home, to Ryland directly. Most likely, I knew whoever would be on it. As the voices continued to grow louder, I stayed still, my eyes trained on the spot in the path where they would come into my view. When they did, it was a familiar face. Uncle Falcon? I stepped out from the tree line to see my uncle standing there with three others, Keely, Lucas, and Cameron. Keely and I had been best friends for as long as I could remember. Growing up side by side, my father had trained us in combat. The circular knotted band marked around my right arm was visible proof of my warrior status, and one of the few things I had to remember him by. He died in battle when I was 12, nearly a full year after he'd been summoned to the Mandari court. A radius horde! Alexandra, what are you doing out here? My uncle questioned as he and the others caught up with me. You'll have to ask Prince Brennan, I replied. You received a letter as well? Yes. And you? I looked at the three others. My eyes landed on Keeley. Her round face and small facial features were a mismatch for her strong muscular body structure. My facial features were strong and sharp, high cheekbones and all, not to mention the pointed ears. They are a rare commodity among us elves of present day due to all of the mixed blood over the centuries from humans and other magical creatures. Very few of us had pointed ears, and I assumed I only managed to have them because my father had carried them as well. Something else I could remember him by. All four of us, Falcon answered. Being the proper warrior she is, Keeley brought her letter to me to discuss before leaving. The boys did the same, which is more than I can say for you. You were asleep when I left, I stated while looking at my uncle. The warrior delivered my letter to the training grounds. I decided not to tell you or Kaya, considering something we had in common. Of course, the warrior would have gone to Falcon at the arena. He had been captain of our village's army since my father had died, leaving the position and part of my heart vacant. So I guess we'll be traveling together then, Cameron asked. Looks like it, Falcon replied. How much longer do you think it will be until we reach Ryland? I asked. If you get moving, we'll reach them before midday. His words weren't harsh. They carried the tone of a father speaking to his daughter. I sighed at his words. As I joined them and we continued to walk, I couldn't help but let my mind wander back to where it had been when I had shoved the letter into my bag. What did the prince want with my presence? He wasn't even my prince. Sure, we Mindari and Delonte respected both royal courts, but I was Mindari, and he was the Prince of Delonte. I would have thought if someone from the royal families needed to see me, it would be my own prince. I shook my head to clear my thoughts. The sooner I gave up trying to figure out what was going on and just finished getting there, the sooner I would have the answers to my questions. God. Not nearly as bad as the first one. Still not great, but not nearly as bad as the first one. Um, do I have the notes for the future version in here? Um, so basically I changed like the entire magic system, a bunch of the structure, like it's, it's, uh, it's a whole different, it's a whole different ball game. So basically the newest version just says, uh, warriors will open with a fight scene between Alex and Falcon. Of course it will start off almost as if she's fighting for her life, but we'll pick up but we'll pull back to it being a spar with her and her uncle during warrior training. It'll go through a little of their backstory because you have to. Uh, then it will take the two of them plus Keely leaving the arena and heading back to Alex's home for dinner or I don't know, some meal or refreshment or after a spar or whatever. Um, this is 
peak Jessica writing out ideas here. Uh, when they get inside of the home, they see four guards standing outside, two on either side of the door to the hut. They are wearing armor uh, or leathers from whatever city Prince Brendan's from. I can't remember right now. It's Ryland, but whatever. Um, go over a little bit about how they're used to seeing people there um, because Falcon is captain and occasionally has to deal with the higher society of the Mindari and Delonte, but they typically have noticed that someone's coming and this time they didn't. Uh, Falcon speaks with the two women closest to the side of the door, Samira and Haley. Their names aren't in here, but I know that it's Prince Brennan's two guards and their names are Samira and Haley. Don't remember what fucking city he's from, but I know his guards' names. Uh, they do not state why they are there, but they allow the three of them to pass through the door. When Alex gets inside, she sees her mother at the long wooden table, a hot tea in front of her, the cup steaming, but she does, she's not alone. Sitting across from her is Prince Brennan. Alex knows him because she's met him. Falcon and the Delonte keep in touch pretty often, so she's gone to the castle a lot. Um, she knows both Prince Brennan and Princess Keeley, who's his sister. Um, quickly mentioned that she hasn't seen Prince Zane, who is the prince of the Mendari for a while because reasons. Uh, Alex's mom gives them the room and heads off to see Keely's mother, promising not to tell anyone that Prince Brennan is there at his request. They're going to know he's there because he's got guards outside of her door, but okay, just go with that, Jessica. Uh, and so begins our story. Our original conversation place, takes place in the library at Prince Brennan's castle, which you guys didn't get to. Uh, will instead take place at the kitchen table of Alex's childhood home, um, and it makes more sense for things to happen the way that it happens and blah, 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 blah. And then I made like some notes about the new ending basically is where we're at with that. I have very much been a person who writes multiple drafts of stories and every draft I write, I find out new things about my characters and my world. Um, and it's a weird process this story in particular, I have been working on it longer than anything else. Like I said, it's been 15 years, um, but I haven't been working on it straight for 15 years. Like I probably haven't actually touched it since 2019. So I kind of put it on the back burner and I've done that multiple times where I've just felt like I don't have the skill set to write this epic fantasy that the story is definitely going to be one day because it in entails multiple countries, multiple species, multiple magic systems. Like there's a lot to this story. Um, and I just don't have the skill set to do that. But every time I learn something new by writing a newer story, I will go in and add that to the story and I'll change it and adapt it into what I want it to be in the future. So one day I will get there. Uh, I might be 95, but it'll get there. I think what works best for me, I could be wrong. Um, clearly, because I haven't actually, you know, sold a book or anything. But I think what works for me is just working on things as I feel like I'm prepared to do. And clearly being okay with, I mean, I just read some shitty words to the entire internet. Um... And I'm not stressed about it. Like, it's just, it's not great, but it's not intended to be great. Like, it, yeah, it's a fifth draft. It should probably be better than it is. But um, at this point, it's a fifth draft that no one else has ever seen because I, uh, well, that's not true because I did query it on like draft three. I was in my 20s. Okay. I was in my early 20s. I didn't know back then. Like, I didn't know anything about the publishing industry. I just thought you wrote a book and you sent it off and that's more embarrassing than, than my actual writing. So, um, anyway, that's the thing. Uh, thank you, Jessica, for sending in the question. It was a, definitely a fun one to answer. Um, and maybe one day when I do actually finish the damn story, um, we can come back and look at it again and see how different it really is from the first draft. Uh, cause it's definitely different. That is going to be it for me today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple times a week. Right now we're in the middle of Advent, so I will be posting every day between now and the 24th. Uh, if you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!